All right, let's do this. Hello everyone, my name is Melanie. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel today. So in today's video, you can see by the title what we're going to be talking about today. I'm going to be sharing my testimony with you, my spiritual journey of how I went from someone who was practicing new age beliefs or I guess not practicing, I believed it, to where I am now, someone who has been in relationship with God, who knows Jesus, who doesn't doubt his existence anymore, who does not call God the universe anymore, and sharing how I got to this point, where God met me when he came into my life, and just everything in between. I have been hesitant to make this video, to be honest. I don't exactly know why. It feels very vulnerable, and I don't know why God has placed it on my heart so heavily to share this with you, but in this season of life that, my, that I'm in, honestly, just throughout my life in general, I want to be obedient to what God is leading me to do, and so this is what obedience is looking like in my life right now, making this video and sharing my experience and journey with you. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and get into this. So let's start this story at the beginning. I grew up in Orlando, Florida. I was born June 19th, 1991, and more or less, I grew up in church. From a young age, my mom got us involved in the youth ministry at the church we were attending throughout majority of my childhood. This church had like a separate service for kids every Sunday that I went to. Looking back, um, a lot of my experience as a kid in church was very fear-based. I just remember being afraid of going to hell. Every Sunday when they would ask for people who want to give their life over to Christ, I would raise my hand every single Sunday because they used to tell us that you went to hell, it would be like the worst pain you could ever imagine, continuously, forever. It's like breaking your leg over and over again. And I had never broken a bone, but the idea of breaking my leg sounded terrible. So I just, rose my hand every Sunday, went up there and gave my life to Christ just in case I did something during the week that canceled what I had done the previous Sunday. So it was just very, very fear-based for me. And I didn't know that at the time, that just seemed normal. And it was around this time, I would say middle school to high school, where a lot of things were changing in my life. And this is when I also started to have a lot of questions about Christianity, a lot of questions about God, and Jesus, and I didn't have anyone to ask these questions to. And when I did find someone to ask these questions to, the answers that I got were, were, were answers that led me further away from him. So one of the big questions that I had was, what about people that live in the middle of nowhere, people who would never hear the gospel? What about them? Were they going to go to hell? And I remember in my golf program, there was a pastor or a preacher or someone who was in the church and I asked this question to them. His answer to me was that they should just know. And I was like, that doesn't even make sense. Even as a middle schooler, I was like, that doesn't even make sense to me. And he said, they should just be able to look around the world, to look at the sun, the moon, the sky, the stars, like look around and see God's handprint in everything and just know God. And that just didn't make sense to me. And I just couldn't wrap my brain around that. And it just did not ring true to me. And it felt like if that is what God is really expecting, I don't know about this God. So around this time where I'm starting to have all these questions and no one to ask them to, or people answering them that aren't answering them in the best way, um, my life is changing dramatically because my parents are divorcing. And so the divorce was very, very hard on everyone in my family. My life completely changed. I went from going to a private Christian school to going to public school. The dynamic of my family was changed. I grew up really close with my dad and he was no longer living in the house because of the divorce. And so everything in my life was changing. 
our routines around going to church, the church we went to, that was changing as well. And it just became a very, very transactional church experience. We would go in after worship was over and we would leave before the call to altar prayer to avoid the traffic. And we would just kind of be in there 35, 40 minutes and leaving on Sunday. And that was really my life until I went to college. So I went to college having all of these past experiences. And honestly, when I got to college freshman year, I was at FIU in Miami. The last thing on my mind was God. I wanted to do me, okay? I was free. I could do whatever I wanted. And I started smoking, I started drinking, I got into a serious relationship and I started having sex and I got heavy into all of that. By the end of my first semester as a freshman, almost every friend I made was either expelled or suspended from attending school due to the activities that we were participating in around drugs and that left me my second semester of my freshman year just feeling isolated. I was depressed and didn't know it. I was just sad and embarrassed to feel like I didn't have any friends, even though I made friends, but they were all gone. It was just a really, really difficult semester for me. And it was during this time that I really started relying on weed to get by daily. So I started to smoke before I did anything, before I went to class, before I went to work. Because of my lack of social life, I picked up a second job just to stay busy because staying in my room, I was just drowning in depression. And I didn't share this with anyone and I myself really didn't even know I was depressed at the time. And so after Another semester of being at FIU, I decided I did not want to do this to myself anymore and I returned back to Orlando to finish out my college education at UCF. And so when I made that transfer, I was coming out of depression. I was searching for something that made sense to me, something that could be a foundation that I could build this new life that I wanted for myself and I found a book and the book was by Eckhart Tolle and I just remember that book just like light bulbs went off when I first read it. It talked about the voice in your head, your subconscious and how you are not the thoughts you are thinking that don't identify with them and it was the first time I had ever just heard anyone talk about your subconscious. It was the first time I'd ever read anything about um, those thoughts you have in your brain. And I didn't know anyone else had thoughts like that. And so I was like, oh my gosh, someone else is experiencing what I'm experiencing. And I was really um, just like mind blown. The book started to help me get out of my depression, and that's what I thought. But looking back, therapy, I was in therapy. Therapy was helping me get out of my depression. But I correlated this book to getting me to a new, healthier mind state, and it was then that my just fire for new age everything was lit. I then, from reading that Eckhart Tolle book, just went down the new age rabbit hole. I was in this new age sphere for about five years. I believed in spirit guides. I believed that when animals would randomly cross my path, that it was the universe trying to tell me something. I did not believe in God. I called God the universe. I believed in manifesting. I believed that all I had to do to have confidence, to feel loved, to have peace in my life was to watch my thoughts and to not identify with them and to just let them come and go. And that if I just tried hard enough, 
that I could get to this enlightenment point and life would just be great. I carried crystals around with me. I used to gift people crystals. I was just very, very heavy into everything that came with my new age beliefs. I was still struggling though. I struggled with my confidence. I struggled with my relationships with others, um, especially men. I had this commitment phobia. I was not at peace within myself. I was constantly striving for that, but never seemed to be able to remember to do all these things to get to that point. Towards the end of college, I decided that I wanted to move abroad and I moved to Korea. And that is where God found me, or met me, rather. When I was in Korea, I was isolated. I went there knowing absolutely no one. Luckily, I met people, but within the first three weeks of me moving across the globe, I had a breakup. And so I was absolutely in love with this person that I was dating and he broke up with me and I was devastated. I was just, I had never cried so much in my life. And again, I was isolated. I met some people, but I've only been here for three weeks and I didn't feel comfortable just boohoo crying around them, but I was heartbroken. I, was just so incredibly sad, so incredibly isolated. I didn't know what to do, I didn't know who to turn to, and it was in those moments that God really just met me there. Um, I did not think I was gonna cry. <laughs> I was trying to do everything that I had learned in these books. To get myself out of the sadness that I was feeling, but nothing was working. And I have to backtrack a little bit to let you know that um, I lived in a small town called Yongju and you have no control over where you are placed when you're an epic teacher. And it just so happened that in my incoming class, 2000, spring 2000, what was it? Spring 2015, there were two other girls who were going to be placed in the city of Yongju with me. And they would end up becoming two of my best friends. And one of them was um, an ex-missionary and so when I'm going through this breakup and trying to deal with this sadness by myself the two other English speakers <laughs> that I know in this new town that I'm living in in this new country that I'm living in she invited me to go to church with her and after we would go to church on Sundays, we would go eat shabu shabu afterwards, which is kind of like a hot pot. And I finally had someone to answer all of those long-standing questions that I had about what happens to people who never have the experience or never get the chance to have someone tell them about God. Are they gonna go to hell? Um, what is the meaning of this? What is the meaning of that? And it was questions that were keeping me from lean, like keeping me from even looking over at God, thinking he's cruel, thinking like I don't want anything to do with someone who would do that. And it was just such a very specific gift to me to have someone, an ex-missionary who has been trained to answer and engage and bring people to Christ to have her as my friend and to have been placed in this town with her. We had an incoming class, again, Epic Spring 2015, of 300 other foreign teachers. And God orchestrated for us to be in the same town. And it was something that she said to me one day after church that had changed my life. 
she told me that it's not about religion, that it is about relationship, that God just wants to be invited into my life. He wants to do life with me, and that's it. And it was in that moment that I thought, I can do that. I, I want that. I want to do life with someone. If that's all it is, I can do that. And my life was changed then. I decided that I wanted to get to know God more. I just had never felt such peace. And I was coming to realize his extensive love for me. And I was able to look back over my life and I was able to start to see his hand in everything. His hand in this person that I met. His hand in this relationship ending. His hand in being redirected from this to that. His hand in putting the desire for me to go to Korea in my heart and in my stubborn brain that would never accept <laughs> no for an answer. And it was all a part of his plan to meet me there and to transform my life. Once I really came into relationship with God, I was really able to see that new age didn't do it for me because it didn't include him. New age made me the God of my life, made me in charge of um, the success or the negative outcome that I experienced all based on how well I was watching my thoughts and not identifying with my thoughts. There was nothing that was relational in that. And as humans, we are relational beings. We are made to be in relationship with one another and with God first and foremost. And that is something that I just didn't know until God met me. And honestly, until Irene had told me that. And yeah, I am five years in to my spiritual journey, my spiritual walk with Christ as an intentional decision and not just, you know, being in the church as a kid. This has all been intentional. And I know that this is just the beginning. And I am just hoping this video can encourage anyone to look towards him and to know that he is always pursuing you and regardless of what you call him he is always ready to welcome you whenever you are ready to acknowledge that he's right there and um yeah i am really glad that i was able to share this with you guys i i i um I'm just grateful for the love of God. I really am. It's the only thing that has the ability to change you. Um, so yes, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I want you to know that I have more things on my heart that I'd like to share with you in regards to my relationship with God. I know that God has placed it on my heart for a reason. And again, the season I'm in, the season I'm in, I want to be obedient. So with all that being said, I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.